Transformation within is the salvation of the race, Murdo MacDonald Bain. He said to them, And who do you say I am? So Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, You are a blessed man, Simon Barjona, for it was my Father in heaven, not flesh and blood, that revealed this to you. Matthew 16, 15, 17. It is more important to experience what is said in these letters than to discuss merely on the verbal level. What we are aiming at is to experience in the deeper strata of consciousness rather than to superficially discuss whether ideas themselves are true or not, for ideas will not transform the self nor will they bring peace and harmony. Ideas will never transform the self or the world. Outward transformation comes only when there is an inward transformation through experience. To merely try to eliminate from our minds, bodies, and circumstances adverse conditions without inward transformation is useless. Is it not the general practice to try and place health, happiness, and abundance in the place of ill health, unhappiness and lack? But this is living in opposites, reverting from one to the other. When you switch the electricity on you expect the light, so it is with the life within, we do not create the light, the light is the electricity, so is life the light in man. We do not create life, life is and it is to experience life that is essential, and not the placing of a positive in the place of a negative which is merely a conflict of opposites. Therefore it is not a superficial change that is needed but a radical transformation which is so essential in the individual and the world, which is rapidly disintegrating. Unless there is this profound experiencing of life itself there can be no awareness. Without awareness our minds are bound by the paralyzing suggestions that come to us from the crude thinking of the race, suggestions that are accepted and acted upon without question. Are we not subject to these paralyzing suggestions continuously? We accept without question and act on these suggestions with disastrous results. Impressions of fear, worry, disability and infirmity are given to us daily, the effects are sufficient to cause much sickness, misery and unhappiness. But if we can be wide awake we can discern our thinking and thereby transform the inner. But to try and think the opposite while we accept these suggestions is pure ignorance. The ever-present reality is always present and it itself is expressing itself, therefore there is no need to cause a conflict and confusion of opposites, but this truth has not yet penetrated the consciousness of man. Modern science has revealed that light and sound are simply different intensities of motion, so are the thoughts of mankind different intensities of motion, self-created. To merely separate man from his thought is useless for man and his thought are one, man's thoughts are the result of his own experiences, his beliefs and the acceptance of external suggestions. When man transforms himself his thoughts will be in accordance with that transformation. Therefore transformation is our first line of defense. Matter is mind materialized, mind substance is the basis of everything you see and feel and what you see are merely effects. Cause is within, yet the majority are reacting to effects every day of their lives. When this is so there is ignorance of the cause. Thus we are caught up in effects because we are not wide awake, we are not discerning what our thoughts and reactions are. Is it not so that we look to action according to a particular formula, a theory? One pattern of action here and another there, so we choose the one which suits us because of suggestions that come from without. There can be no transformation within when this conditioning exists, so we act according to the pattern laid down that suits us according to our ideals, which are generally a protection for the self. So we are faced with the problem of killing our brother in the name of religion, of peace, of a country and so on. We will not find the answer in further conflicting and opposing forces. The true answer is not to be found in the dualistic pattern of thought. We kill because our property, our safety, our prestige is threatened, as with individuals so with groups and with nations. To be free from violence and non-violence there must be freedom from acquitiveness, ill will and the rest. Because we do not go into the problem deep enough we are satisfied with reform, with alterations, within the pattern of duality. So within the pattern we try to bring about a modification, a change, so we maneuver to a better position, to a more advantageous point for ourselves. Change within the pattern only creates further confusion and pain and further disintegration. 
we must go beyond the pattern of duality to solve the problem of opposites. Within the pattern there is no truth, however much we may try to capture it. If we seek truth in the pattern we will be led to too many delusions. We must go beyond the pattern of opposites, of the I and not I, the possessor and the possessed for beyond and above the endless conflict of duality and opposites lies truth and creative understanding. This is to be experienced, not to be speculated upon, not to be formulated, but to discern through deep awareness these dualistic hindrances. Thus we can experience and not merely make it an intellectual argument. The judge is as guilty as the accused. Each one of us has built up this civilization, each one has contributed towards its misery, each one of us is responsible for its actions. Are we not each one of us the outcome of each other's actions and reactions? What we see is the collective result of our thoughts and actions, following a pattern in opposition to another. No person or group or nation is separated from another, we are all interrelated, we are one, whether we acknowledge it or not. We separate ourselves to condemn or to praise. The power to oppress is evil, and every group which is large and well organized becomes a potential evil. By shouting loudly enough about the evil of others we overlook our own and the greatest evil is to kill another. When we allow such an evil, we let loose countless minor disasters. Is it not a fact that we do not condemn war, but those who are cruel in war? But war is the foundation of cruelty. In most individuals there is confusion, there is misery, there is struggle between good and evil, not only in the individual but in the world which is the extension of the individual. Therefore no one is secure in the dualistic pattern. The important thing then is to find out our relationship to the whole confusion, chaos and misery. Is it not so that most of us desire the good and hate the evil? Yet hating the evil does not dissolve the evil, but gives it a power that it does not possess. The eternal or whatever name you like to call it, God, truth etc., is the only power there is. All philosophers all religions have proclaimed it so, yet have they found it? It cannot be found in a pattern, in a creed or a book, or through another's belief. I want to show you the absurdity of those beliefs. A child is affected by its parents' belief in sickness, in dogma, in death which is real to them. This belief is the enemy to health and happiness as slavery is to freedom, for man's belief in slavery and disease is colossal. When people are sick I find them deep in the belief of their disease. When I show them the error and convince them that it has no power of its own they learn the truth and are free, for the divine intelligence is always in operation. When we realize that, we die into life and not into death, struggle ceases. A belief in disease is like any other belief, so we accept the belief of another, the blind lead the blind and we all fall into the ditch. A religious belief in some outside God is the hardest to eliminate, because it is an inherited belief. When we see how our beliefs come about we will discard them. The self desires continuity so the self accepts any belief that will promise him this. But it is not the continuity of life he seeks but the continuity of the self. When we discern the ways of the self and what it is made up of, we will find that it is but an illusion. When the illusion dissolves there is true continuity of life in wholeness and oneness, and not in separation. When we abandon the pursuits of the self then we will find that which is beyond, and that which is beyond is love, and love is eternal. Then take hold of the tree of life which is your salvation. Salvation is through love alone for God is love and love is God, and this is what we have to experience, not merely speculating about love. Unless ye are born again, this time of spirit and water you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is transformation within. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me, vain is their worship of me, for the doctrines they teach are but human precepts. Matthew 15, 8, 9. Benediction. O Eternal One, I know that Thou art I and I am Thee and Thou alone dost exist now and ever will. Thou dost impersonally exist in every soul as love and wisdom. I behold Thee as Christ. I behold Thee as Krishna, in the babe Thou art there. In all nations alike, dark and fair, thou art there hidden in the temple of love. In the sea of cosmic infinitude so do thou appear unto me, visible and living, 
for thou art the ocean of life, O beloved eternal one. My peace and my love remain with you. Yours very sincerely. Murdo MacDonald Bain